Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. For the first time in months, we are getting some hopeful news. Connecticut's COVID-19 numbers, the statistics that the governor's office comes out with almost daily, are showing a trend, a downward trend. And with the vaccine now rolling out, it appears we're headed out of the woods. But health officials caution, don't let your guard down yet. We still have a ways to go, and it could get more complicated with mutant strains of COVID-19 cropping up around the world and, yes, here in Connecticut. So let's look directly at the science. We are bringing in uh, Dr. Albert Coe, a Yale School of Public Health epidemiologist who is with us now. He is also part of Connecticut's vaccine advisory group. Dr. Coe, thank you so much for talking with us this morning. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for the kind invitation. Of course. All right, so let's talk about these numbers for, you know, the first time in a long time. We're starting to see a leveling off, a bit of a downward trend. What is this attributed to? So, so, Jen, I, I think this is all good news, um, and I think it's attributed to several, several factors. I think probably one of the most important is the, um, the this, the, you know, really the kicking in of the phase 2.1. You know, people are adhering to phase 2.1. Uh, they are decreasing all the drivers of COVID transmission, whether it be super spreading at you know large gathering events, contact rates, and uh, and so forth. The second thing is, is that, you know, obviously the, uh, it's the buy-in from the population. You know, the people realized, you know, we went through a pretty bad second surge. You know, certainly not as bad, you know, much less than the first surge. But it was a bad second surge. And people understand, you know, understand this part of the behavioral re reaction to any epidemic or out outbreak is, you know, people modifying their behaviors to protect themselves. The third, third reason is, is that, you know, the state is intensively testing and people are getting, going out, getting testing. I think we're one of the highest, you know, states per capita in terms of uh, giving, um, you know, providing access to testing. And that certainly is decreasing the number of people who are infected out of the, you know, out in the community and who can infect other people. So the big question is, when are we going to start seeing the effects of the vaccine in our community? And, you know, this past week, the governor did put up a, um, a graphic that we want to show now because it's pretty telling. And it's showing uh, in nursing homes where we know that supposedly everyone's been vaccinated uh, in terms of staff that that's wanted to be. Um, and people, care, caretakers, some of them haven't been, we're, we're told, but we're talking about the patients there, that 100% of them have at least gotten their first shot, from what I understand. So you can see the downward trend here, and I think it's only like 166 cases, positive cases, as of uh, January 26. So this is showing right here that uh, the vaccine is starting to work in that population, no? Right, and so, Jen, I think, well, first of all, the most important thing is, is the cases are down. That, that's really the, you know, um, the key, key, key finding, and the important finding uh, that 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 population, which is highly vulnerable to COVID, is being protected. Now, the reasons exactly why that happened may be many, you know, manifold. You know, first of all, um, you know, as rates in community transmission, as we're, as the state is implementing prevention across the uh, across its population and communities, that is preventing or reducing introductions into the nursing homes. Second of all, the state for many months, you know, since the summer has had an intensive testing program, you know, trying to identify people in the, um, in the nursing homes, responding to that quickly, sending them, you know, to uh, COVID you know, recovery unit, you know, facilities, or, you know, having them being isolated within the nursing homes uh, safely. I think this is a combination of all things. The vaccination started just at the end of, you know, at end of December, and many many people, many of the residents are now just getting their second dose, or you know, or just receiving their second dose. So that decrease, I, I I feel, is really the hard work done by nursing homes, by the Department of Public Health, the state in really reducing the transmission in addition to perhaps some early effects of the vaccine. But I think it's we need to get more evidence to see, to really tease that out. Interesting, okay. Um, we know we're hearing about these mutant strains and it, it kind of feels like a race against time, right? Because you, the more people you can get vaccinated, the less chance there is of these strains popping up. So is that of concern to you when, when you're looking at what's popping up here in Connecticut? I mean, we know we have the UK strain here. 
Yeah, Jen, I, I'm, I'm really worried about that. Um, you know, all we have to do is look to see what's happening in, in the UK and, and now in Ireland, you know, to see how, how devastating, you know, um, that uh, new variant of concern uh, can be. Uh, in t and, you know, we're, we're certainly concerned because it's, it's transmissible and it's, um, there's clear, now much more clear evidence that the, this variant is, uh, is, is more transmissible. And there may, there's some early evidence that it actually may cause a higher degree of risk for acquiring severe complications and, and perhaps dying from the disease. So this is certainly a concern. I think this is a race against time, and it's one that I don't, you know, the vaccine, you know, surely the state is doing everything it can to roll out its vaccination program. It's one of the best in the, in the country in doing so. You know, this is, um, I'm not sure we're going to get enough of our po patient uh, population vaccinated, you know, in order to stem off the, the, these mutants. We've seen in England how these can pop up in the, you know one, two, or three months. I, I suspect in the next couple months. You know, we know that it's here in, in Connecticut. You know, I, I suspect in the next month or two, we're going to have you know potentially much more. We've known this since the beginning of COVID. How COVID can doesn't respect any borders and can travel and can surge uh, fairly fairly quickly. So uh, you know, I, I am very much concerned that we will have you know, um, an increased threat, you know, to really, you know, what seems to be a good direction that we're going to right now, if these variant, if this variant, and particularly the UK variant, you know, takes off, and that, that will happen before we can get a significant proportion of our population uh, vaccinated. What should people do then? We only have about a minute left, but what should people do? I mean, keep doing the social distancing, wearing the mask, getting the vaccine if they can. Uh, we should yeah, take yeah. this current trend for, for granted right now because you could see a second, well, I guess it would be a third surge at this point. Yeah, we can't take a foot off the pedal on that. We, we really have to you know, go to, to the ABCs, use of face masks, reduce gathering size to decrease these super spreading events, and then also to, um, you know, uh, I would say it's, uh, decrease the contacts that we have that that may um, you know help spread these through com you know, communities. So those are all going to be important uh, things to continue to do in the next several months, together with getting the vaccine out to as many people as we can. All right, Dr. Ko, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We hope to have you on the program again soon. All right, very good. Thank you very much, Jen. All right, that does it for us on The Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61. Have a great morning.